Welcome to Worship with Messiah Online. We are so glad that you are with us today. Today we're beginning a new series of messages on the subject of messy spirituality. Because, well, everything's a little bit messy if we're honest with ourselves. Before we get into worship, I'd like you to please take a moment to check in. You can use the button on the screen. A couple, a couple things to tell you about. Beginning... On January 19th, that's Wednesday, January 19th, we have a new Old Testament study called Out of Exile beginning. We'll have, have opportunities to meet at both 3 or 7 p.m. 3 p.m. will be on site. 7 p.m. will be available in person, or there will also be an online on Zoom option. And we'll also, when I get around to it, uh, we'll put videos up on YouTube that you can watch. Also, coming up soon after that, beginning January 30th, that's a Sunday afternoon at 3.30 p.m., we have a new study group, Parents of Young Ones, intended for parents of young children, beginning, again, that Sunday, January 30th at 3.30 p.m. Child care will be included. If you'd like to participate in that, please contact the church office or talk to Pastor Bob. And with that... We'll begin worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord, you judge your people with mercy, and you call us to serve you, inspiring us to seek and then speak your truth without making us prove that we are worthy. Because we aren't. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us new lives and anoint us for faith and service. Bring us deeper into relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our reading for today is from Psalm 51, beginning at the first verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That's the end of the reading. was brought forth in iniquity and in sin and my mother conceived me behold you delight in the truth and the inward me and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart my sin not far but right in front of me against you and you alone god i'm guilty wash me thoroughly cleanse me from iniquity and teach me wisdom in the secret heart create in me a clean heart oh god Spirit within me, O oh God. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. And teach me wisdom in the secret heart. chief of sinners to proclaim come be forgiven the sin of the lamb of god was slain open my lips and my mouth will declare your endless praise and teach me wisdom in the secret heart Spirit within me, O oh God. O oh God, cast me not away from your presence. 
Take not your Holy Spirit. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. And teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Wisdom in the secret heart. Lord is gracious, slow to anger, rich in love he is, good to all. The Lord is gracious, slow to anger, rich in love he is, good to all. The Lord is gracious, and slow to anger, rich in love he is, good to all. Lord is gracious and slow to anger, rich in love he is, good to all, good to all, good to all. all. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. David is considered Israel's great king. The Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. As a young shepherd, he defended his sheep against predators, just as kings were to protect their people. He famously killed Goliath, the champion of Israel's enemies, the, Phil the Philistines. After the death of Saul, Israel's first king, who was deemed a failure, David united Israel's 12 tribes into one kingdom, conquered the nation's enemies, and expanded Israel's borders. Not only because of his military and political successes, but also because he encouraged the people to worship only Yahweh, the true God. David was considered a man after God's own heart. He was the king against whom all later kings would be judged. Did they follow in the ways of their ancestor David, encouraging the people to worship only the true God or not? But Psalm 51, a psalm of repentance, asking God to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And eventually begging the Lord not to take your Holy Spirit from me. Was written after David committed adultery with a woman named Bathsheba. Arranged for her husband, an army officer, to die in battle. And was confronted by the prophet Nathan because of his sin. How could the great king. A man after God's own heart have done such things. Because life is messy. 
messed up. By the way, have you ever committed adultery, then killed your partner's spouse? If not, then you're doing better than King David. And it was actually all downhill from there for David. He couldn't discipline his own children. One of his sons actually mounts a coup against him and is temporarily successful. David has to abandon the palace and leave Jerusalem, regroup, and then come back to retake the throne. And yet David is considered one of the heroes of the Bible. The great king, a man after God's own heart. Because life is messy and people are messed up. Then there's Moses. Moses led the people out of slavery in Egypt, across the desert, and to the borders of the promised land before Joshua led them in. But as a young man, Moses murdered an Egyptian, then fled to the desert where he spent years working as a shepherd before God appeared to him in a burning bush and called him to go back to Egypt to lead the people out of slavery in the event that we call the Exodus. So, has God ever had to send you a talking plant to get your attention? If not, you're not as messed up as Moses was. He was pretty messed up. Life is messy. The Bible is full of messy, messed up people. Think about Noah. The book of Genesis tells us that Noah was a righteous man who walked with God. So God tasked Noah with building an ark. But when the waters receded and the family got off the boat, Noah got drunk, passed out naked, and as the Bible puts it somewhat delicately, lay uncovered in his tent where he was discovered by his sons. Whether you call that a moment of indiscretion, weakness, or failure, it's not a story that most of us heard in Sunday school. It's messy. It's messed up. Abraham, the great patriarch of the nation of Israel, lied about his wife, saying that she was his sister in order to protect himself. Messy. He's messed up. Sarah, Abraham's wife, laughs when she's told that she's going to have a son because she doesn't believe God that it's true. That's messed up. Rahab, who helped the people of Israel conquer the city of Jericho after the exodus, was a prostitute. Life is messy. It's messed up. All of these Old Testament heroes were messy, messed up, flawed people. None of them were perfect. Their lives were complicated and messy, just like the rest of us. When we get to the New Testament, it doesn't get any better. Jesus' greatest conflicts were with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious establishment of his day. He's killed when the Sadducees, the people who control the temple, join forces with the Roman Empire to get rid of him. Paul, the apostle who helped spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire and who was credited with writing 13 books of the New Testament, was persecuting the early church before his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Paul referred to himself as a wretched man. He apparently had some kind of physical disability or condition, which he referred to as a thorn in the flesh, and which he prayed that God would remove, but God never did. Paul's life was messy. It was messed up. The disciples sometimes showed a great ability to not get it, to miss the point. James and John argued about who was the greatest. That was messy. Yet John went on to be a leader, we would probably say an elder or the bishop of the church in Ephesus. Peter had great skill at putting his foot in his mouth saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. At one point, Jesus looks at him and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Has Jesus ever called you Satan? That's pretty serious, right? And after Jesus had been arrested, Peter denied even knowing Jesus. 
It's messy. It's messed up or, or worse. Yet on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached a great sermon. He goes on to be a leader in the church. With the exception of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, every person I've mentioned here is considered a hero of the faith. And some of the Pharisees were also followers of Jesus. David, Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Rahab, the Apostle Paul, James and John, Peter, Jesus, others, disciples. They were all flawed, complicated, messy, messed up people. Yet, they're in what we might call the Faith Hall of Fame. And God used every one of them. Do you know someone who says, I would go to worship, but I'm afraid the roof of the church might cave in? Maybe they think their lives are too messy, they're too messed up. Now, I've seen some of those people eventually show up in worship someplace, and the buildings are still standing. I know a young man I'll call Brent. Brent has been homeless off and on for years now. He's well-meaning, but he's got mental health and addiction issues. Periodically, he gets religion and gets cleaned up for a while. Sometimes he would disappear for a month or two, then he'd show up again. Sometimes he worshipped with us at the church I served in San Bernardino. One time when I asked him if he was coming to worship, he told me that he hadn't been good enough lately, and he didn't think he was worthy to come inside. His life was too messy. But here's the thing. If you could be good enough on your own, or if you could clean up your own mess, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. If we compared Aristotle, Plato, and Jesus, we might say that Aristotle was the most interested in physical reality. Plato was primarily interested in the mind, in the mental realm. And Jesus was interested in the spiritual realm, which includes the mental and the physical. When you hear the word spiritual... You might think of someone who prays all day, reads the Bible constantly, never gets angry or frustrated, and seems to have the inside track in one way or another to God. And besides that, as far as you can tell, they never actually have any fun. They might as well be a monk or a nun. And that's one kind of spirituality. As Mike Yacanali points out in his book that has served as the starting point for this series, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's only one kind of spirituality. So what about the rest of us? What about people whose lives are complicated, messy? What about people who are trying to single parent their kids, who have to work too much or who can't find a job? People who don't get along with their parents or their kids or have chronic health issues. Maybe who've lost a spouse and feel lost themselves because of that. What about people who've done something for which they think they can't be forgiven? Is there a spirituality for those of us who don't have it all together and might not ever have it all together, whose lives are messy, complicated, broken, the good news is that Jesus' ministry was exactly two people with messy lives who didn't have it all together. Let's look at just a couple examples. In Luke chapter 7, Jesus is eating dinner at the home of a Pharisee when a woman who is described as having lived a sinful life cries on his feet, then dries her tears with her hair, kisses them, and pours perfume on them. In the words of the Pharisee who, inv who had invited Jesus to dinner, if this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus replied that she loved much because she had been forgiven much. Then there were Jesus' disciples. They were a pretty ragtag bunch. 
a few fishermen, Simon the Zealot, and Matthew, also known as Levi, the tax collector. Zealots were revolutionaries who wanted to overthrow the Roman Empire. Tax collectors, like Matthew, worked for the Roman Empire. Simon the Zealot and Matthew the tax collector probably would have hated each other and never would have even talked to each other, except that they were both following Jesus. And after Matthew started following Jesus, he threw a party and invited all of his tax collector and sinner friends to come meet Jesus, which prompted the Pharisees to ask what Jesus was doing eating with the wrong people. And Jesus' reply was that he didn't come to call the righteous people. Instead, he came to call sinners, the messed up people, the people who couldn't follow the rules, to repentance. Jesus loved messy, messed up people and hung out with them. Which means that there's hope for those of us who put ourselves in the is there a spirituality for the rest of us? category. If we pay attention to Jesus' ministry, after a while we realize that anyone, yes, anyone can be spiritual, including common, ordinary, broken, messy people like me, and probably like you, and probably like a lot of people you know who think they're not welcome in a church building. Because the truth is that every one of us doesn't really have it all together. Including those of us who are trying really hard to live godly lives. So what does it mean to say that we can still be spiritual? Spirituality isn't a test of how good we are. Thank God, because I'd flunk. It's not a formula. There are spiritual practices you can follow which will probably help you in your relationship with Jesus. But they're not rules. Spirituality, especially Christian spirituality, can't be reduced to a list of things you have to do, rules you have to follow. And if you're messy, you don't have to get messed up first. Spirituality is about relationship. Specifically, your relationship with Jesus. And it's about connection. Your relationship and your connection with Jesus. But also with other people who are following Jesus. And with people who don't know Jesus yet. And that relationship starts wherever you are. No matter how messy you are. Or how messy you might think you are. Accepting the reality of a broken, messy life can be the beginning of your spiritual life because Jesus will meet you wherever you are, no matter how messed up you are. And no matter how messed up you are or think you are, Jesus loves you and wants a relationship with you. Think about a baby being born. A baby is new life, a miracle, a sign that life will continue. But babies are a mess. They're wet, slimy, messy little creatures when they're born. One of the first things we have to do is clean them up. And they're really self-centered. But we love them, just like God loves us. No matter how messy we are, no matter how messed up we are, no matter how much we need to be cleaned up. And if you think about all of the so-called heroes in the Bible, it becomes clear that not only does God love you, but God can use you no matter how messy or messed up you think you are. Please join me in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for creating us and then loving us and loving us so much that you sent Jesus to save us. Help us to receive that love that you have for us and to believe that you not only love us, but you can use us to do your will in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we come to, we come to the time in our service that we call the love moment I just I want to tell you today about a new adult forum series that's beginning next week, Sunday, January 15th. It's on the subject of the relationship between faith and science, and it's called How Microscopes and Telescopes Glorify God. That's our new adult forum series beginning next Sunday, January 16, meets at 10 a.m. on our campus. And now as we come to our offering time, I just, I just want to remind you that, as always, you can make a gift to Messiah online. You can use automated giving through your bank or our website. You can text Messiah YL to the number on the screen. Or, or you can mail in or drop off your offerings on Monday at Messiah during our Caring Hands food collection. Thank you for your continued generosity, which makes it possible for us to continue our ministry of loving God and loving one another. Let's pray. Lord, you are the source of our life. You are the very ground of our being and existence. Yet we are broken, messy, and messed up. Help us to know you, to know your grace, to know your mercy, to know your presence in our lives. Meet us where we are, not where we would like to be. By the power of your Holy Spirit, prepare us to meet Jesus who died and rose for us. Bring healing and, whole, and wholeness to our broken, messy, messed up lives. And raise us up to new life in the power of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's join in the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us see.
Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with joy. Thanks be to God. <laughs>